Uh, good evening, everyone. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, today we're going to go through some uh, basic uh, echo view. Um, uh, basically, it's uh, like a point of care ultrasound. I, I will not say that it's an echocardiogram. I will probably say it's like a ultrasound of the heart. Uh, this is where I come from. I, I come from uh, Borneo Island. Uh, this is Sarawak, where I'm working. Yeah, so you're here, uh, Vietnam. So Malaysia divided into two. Uh, so one is uh, uh, West Malaysia and East Malaysia. This is where I station. Yeah. Um, I'm actually a pediatric intensivist. Yeah, I, I'm not a rich cardiologist, so I will probably not able to teach you um, very detailed in terms of echocardiogram as per cardiologist. But we're going to go through how ultrasound of the heart can help you in terms of day-to-day -day basis. How are you going to help you uh, in terms of managing of the patients. Uh, st brief statistics of uh, what I have from, uh, from your response. So uh, the question is, like, uh, can I perform a basic echocardiogram uh, view confidently? Uh, so 71% uh, are, are not, uh, not very confident in uh, performing a basic echo view. So this is the outline. We're going to go through some introduction. And uh, to do a good uh, ultrasound, we, you must select the right probe, getting a right window, and getting a right view. And after this, we're going to go on some sonal anatomy of the heart and some pathological example. So if time allows, then we will go through some um, cardiac output uh, measurement, or what do you call that, uh, uh, heart cardiac function measurements. So like, like you're going to war, so uh, very important you know your weapon. So in order to uh, do ultrasound, we need to know uh, your machine well, especially the probe, right? So um, it, to perform a ultrasound of the heart, so these are the probe that we can use. Okay. okay. So uh, let's look at the first group of the probe, uh, what we call as a phase array probe. So these phase array probes, the special thing about it is that the sound wave are emitted from the middle of the probe and then is uh, diverted out. Okay? So most of the time, these, these kind of probes are flat, square and flat. Okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, it is predominantly used for echocardiogram. It's best to use an echocardiogram. The re main reason is that especially the, the sound wave actually emerge, emerge from a small one little point from the, from the probe. So when, when you do echocardiogram, so you're actually peeping into the intercostal space, right? So we need to make the sound wave penetrate through the intercostal space. So if the sound wave in this manner, when you put a probe in the intercostal space, then you're going to get the maximum images. As, as you have learned previously, so uh, the probe can come with a different frequency. Yeah? The, the, high, the, the lower the frequency, that means the sound wave can penetrate deeper can de see the deeper structure well. So the higher the frequency, uh, the structure uh, are superficially, the structure which are uh, at a superficial structure can be seen much better. So hence, for adult, we need to penetrate the skin better. So we are using a lower frequency. Commonly, we're using 2 to 4 hertz. For neonate and child, right, commonly we use uh, 5 to 8 megahertz. So these are the main two difference besides the, the type of the probe are different. So if we use an adult probe to, uh, for children, the image will not be uh, sharp. So if you use the neonate or child probe for adult, we might not be able to see the heart uh, deep enough very clearly. Okay, yeah. Next slide. The other probe that you're going to use is um, this probe what we call a uh, microconvex. Right? This is a microconvex or curly, curvy linear probe. Yeah, these two probes as compared to earlier one, uh, the phase array probe, the sound wave actually come out from all the surfaces uh, of the uh, ultrasound uh, probe, right? So hence, uh, if you want to penetrate the sound wave into the intercostal space, uh, this might be having a little bit problem, yeah? And hence the image that you quality that you come out might not be that good, yeah? But, but if you look at the probe here properly, this uh, microconvex, actually this microconvex, the area is quite small, right? As compared to curvy linear. 
Hence, for small children, sometimes we can use this uh, probe to do an echocardiogram. Okay. And you see, looking at the frequency as well, so it's going quite good for superficial structure, yeah? especially for in child and infant. And uh, this, this probe actually is very really useful, and um, it can be used for line setting or doing other lung ultrasound examination and also abdominal uh, examination. So um, yeah, this is uh, the, the one of the ultrasound probe that they can use for nearly everything. Yeah. Mm. So this is a different image that comes out the different probe. So this is from a face array. We look at that. How to differentiate is a face array because you look at the image. It is tr uh, sharp. He have a very sharp uh, summit, all right. And because the sound wave come up from one point, all right. And you could see the edges structure uh, very well, right? And then you can appreciate the heart much better. So same thing, same area, if you're using a curvy linear, right? How to differentiate is from curvy linear, you look at the, the top bits, right? It is no longer a sharp point. Uh, it is a curve. This follow, uh, the sound will come up from the curve. Hence, the top bit is uh, uh, like a, a curve shape, right? And it emitted down. So because the rib here, the rib here, so you will not able to appreciate the structure here very well because of the the rib uh, the the rib that uh, uh, cause uh, refraction and and when you come down the sound image uh, the quality is much much more different from the echocardiogram so hence if you use the appropriate ultrasound probe and uh, then you can get a better image yeah. Mm. Yeah, you can see the the video clearly it, it moved fast enough right uh, Lian? Hi, Lian. Yeah. is the video moving okay you can see yeah, the yeah. music movie. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Right. okay. So the, the next, uh, before we start, the thing that is sometimes we need to pay attention is that the probe orientations, right? So during echocardiogram, uh, the probe orientation is uh, put it, uh, seated at the right, yeah? as compared to the usual others ultrasound uh, examination. Most of the time, the pointer is put on the left, right? So this is a probe, this is a pointer, all right? So this pointer always point to the right, our our right or patient left. Yeah. So when when you hold the hold the probe, this is a uh, your right hand, your right side. So, so this is the marker here. So marker will be here, right? So when you do the ultrasound examination of the heart, so the marker need to be placed here, all right? Okay, and this is a corresponding uh, uh, marker. So it's very important. Sometimes if you put the uh, marker wrongly. So uh, if you share the image, the patient must have uh, going to be have a, 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 a what they call that TGA type of pictures. Huh? So it's quite important. So we have to standardize uh, the probe uh, marking. So uh, when <coughs> when you do the ultrasound of the heart, so we must know our our window to the heart, right? So because uh, this is uh, the normal anatomy of the heart, right? So when you look at it. Uh, the, there's a limitation in terms of looking into the heart, more so because the lung is covering the heart. So the, the window that we could only use to, to see the heart is actually only this much, right? Okay. So when we do, this is the only area that we're going to see in terms of the heart, right? So we, we must know our limitation, uh, especially when you look doing a, a heart ultrasound on a patient that ventilated. Uh, especially when they are asthma, when they are with hyperinflated lung, a lot of time we need to find way um, uh, to look into the heart because when their lung are very really hyperinflated, majority of the normal view will be obscure. So this is a very important thing that we need to uh, we need to pay attention to. Yeah. So when you do ultrasound heart, we couldn't see the heart. Uh, a lot of time is due to hyperinflation, which is shown uh, by these pictures. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm sure you've gone through lung ultrasound already, right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. okay. So now let's go to the view. So knowing that the window, uh, so if you understand that that was the window window that you have, yeah, right. And and now we're going to uh, the view. Yeah. So yeah. So this is a parasternal long axis view. So uh, you you want to look at the probe. Uh, this this is a probe. Uh, that we're going to put. Uh, huh? So this is, a, as you say, parasternum is beside the sternum, near the sternum. Long axis, because we follow the axis of the heart, 
Yeah? So it's a parasternal long axis. So the orientation uh, is the probe here will pointing towards uh, about 10 to 11 o'clock. Yeah? Right. And, and this is an image that you're going to produce uh, if you use a parasternal long axis view. So this is a long axis which is parallel to the heart. Okay. So then the short axis, that means you turn the probe 90 degree. Yeah. So uh, at the same positions, okay, at, at what you see just now, right? So this is what we call a parasternal short axis because this is the axis of the heart, all right? Just now was long axis, now it's short axis, right? So why parasternal? Because as you know that we only have this little window here eh, along the sternum, right? So it's a parasternal short axis which is across the heart, parasternal short axis, and this is the view that you're going to get. Yes. So the next one is the apex of the heart. Huh? So we put the probe, slide down the probe to the apex of the heart, right? So this is the apical four chamber view. So apex, four chamber, why? Because you're going to see the four chamber here, right? So same thing, we have the window here, right? And then you use this probe to shine in to get the view. So the other view from this window is what we call a subcostal view, right? So this is a subcostal view because it put uh, underneath the coster. This is what you're going to get in terms of image. So the other the other side that you're going to can see from the window is that suprasternum. Yeah. So this is a suprasternum view where we are going to see the aortic arch. So it's called suprasternal aortic arch view. So after knowing uh, knowing that you had the window here, you had a different different win uh, you, you had a window here, all right? And then you can see the heart from the different window. So sometimes when you do echocardiogram, it's just that where to start and how to start. And when you see usually the cardiologist, you will always start with apical four chamber, right? Um, but uh, sometimes in, in order to have a more systematic view, uh, and then you, you have a, a, a algorithm, then it will be much easier for you to, to proceed. So this is a basic, uh, simple sequence um, that sometimes uh, you can use it as a guide uh, to start an uh, ultrasound heart of the patient. So uh, later on, you, you just see one time, see how the sequence like, right? So this is how I usually um, uh, teach my junior doctor how to start uh, on the ultrasound heart. Yeah. So step by step, so that um, uh, you know where to start on. Um, Right, so uh, we started on. Yeah, the video will play. Huh, you start on uh, palasternum. Yeah, palasternum from top you slide down. You get a long axis. You turn around. You got a short axis, and then after that you you tilt the ultrasound probe. Right, uh, the few, few different degrees to in order to get a different uh, short axis view. You slide down the ultrasound to the apex, and then you look up. Okay and then look up again. After that, migrate the ultrasound to the abdomen, tilt to the side to see the IVC. So, so you go uh, one by one, all right? So you go put the probe uh, shine to the uh, right shoulder, the, the, uh, the, the marker, uh, the probe right shoulder. You slide from the top to the bottom until you get a long axis view like this. Okay, so it's very important we put uh, left palasternum, right? Because we want the probe uh, to be at the uh, intercostal space. Uh, then only we can obtain the nice image. So if the probe is on top of the ribs, sometimes there's a problem that we cannot get a, a nice easy image like this. Yeah, okay. Okay, so when, when you look at this, so this is what we call a palasternal long axis, all right? Yeah, so in this view, the structure that you're going to see is from the top to come down. So this is the uh, right ventricles. Okay, this is the right ventricle, and then this is the uh, ventricular septum. Okay, right, and this is the left ventricle. Okay, left atrium. Right, and the structure here yeah, you see is the mitral valve. Okay, and then this is the aortic valve.
in, in order to see what is abnormal, one has to be know what is normal first, right? So we need to familiar yourself what's the normal long axis look like, right? Especially so when you look at the mitral valve and the aortic valve, right? So they are open and closed very happily. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, beside that, though you need to look at the chamber size, okay? The left ventricular chamber should be always much more larger in this view uh, as compared to the right side. Okay. And also when you look at the outflow, yeah, this is the aortic outflow and also the left atrial size. Okay. So the left atrial size should not be very much larger than the aortic outflow. So, and then you look at the muscle. So, this is the septal wall. Okay, this is the lateral posterior wall. This is the septal wall. So, when they are contracting, okay, you look at it how good they are contract. They are supposed to be near opposing to each other. So, it's very, very important. This view alone can tell you a lot of things, right? It tells you that the, the left chamber is, uh, is big, uh, is relatively good in size. The heart contracting very well, okay, and then the iota outflow is much, uh, a little much bigger than the left atrium, which means it's not overloading, right? And when you look at the valve, the valve is very happy. Both are very happy, right? And uh, there's no thickening of the valve, right? And you look at the mitral valve, uh, actually uh, open and close very nicely, nearly touch the uh, septal wall. So overall, he gives you a, a good impression really, if you manage to get this view alone. So as you see that the septum is here, right? The ventricular septum is here. So a lot of time, if you want to see the ventricular septal defect, so this is a quite important view, whereby if you could detect any discontinuity along this septal wall. Okay. So after that, after you get the view, so you turn the probe uh, 90 degree. Okay? You turn the probe 90 degree. So this is the view that you're going to get. It's a palasternal short axis view. So it, in this view, the pointer is usually pointing towards the patient left shoulder. So in this manner, in this manner, sometimes you might not get exactly after you turn, you might not get exactly these pictures. Sometimes you need to tilt and move a slightly uh, tilt or shift your prop a while in order to get this uh, get these pictures. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah. So and um, when you look at this, uh, so it's very important for us to identify what is uh, the structure all about, right? So we start from uh, the center. The center is iota. All right, this is the aortic valve. Okay, so in the aortic valve itself, a lot of time, uh, people like to say you could you should see a Mercedes signs, or when you say the Mercedes signs, sign sign is quite difficult. But I always prefer the always a Y. Huh? You can see that's a Y inside. Why there's a Y? Because there's a three cups of aortic valve. So from this view, uh, very importantly is that uh, there are coronary artery come out from these two cups, right? So this is a left coronary artery that arises from this cup. You see the tiny little coronary artery. And uh, the right coronary artery which cannot be visualized here. So it's, it's a very important uh, area where the cardiologist assess the uh, 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 coronary artery aneurysm in Kawasaki disease. So we start from the side. So this is the iota in the middle. So we start from the side. So uh, you didn't see the, the atrial septal wall very well here. But this is the left atrium. And then this is the right atrium. So this is a tricuspid valve. Okay. And then this is a right ventricular outflow tract. Okay. And this is a pulmonary valve. Okay. This is main pulmonary artery. Right. This is left pulmonary artery. This is right pulmonary artery. Yeah. So after that, uh, you going to tilt the probe, yeah, at different degree, right? Right. So uh, right, you tilt out, okay, to going to get the aortic iota view like you saw just now, okay, and you tilt down further, you're going to see a mitral valve uh, view, right? Further down, you're going to see the Papillary muscle view, and finally is the apical view.
For, for focus purpose, uh, the point of care ultrasound purpose, what we are more interested is this papillary muscle view, right? Yeah, so uh, in order to get this papillary muscle view, as what you could see that you tilt, you tilt backward, yeah? you tilt to the back. So in order to get this view, the importance of this view is that uh, first, uh, this is a mid, mid ventricular area, right? So this is a mid left ventricle, right? And this is a very important place for us to see the shape of the left ventricle, okay, as compared to the right ventricle, right? So we always have a very nice, round, donut shape uh, left ventricle. So if this shape is any abnormality, right, so we know that there's, there's some problem with the heart. So after that, we're going to search for uh, apex. Yeah, so because you remember just uh, earlier on the window, so in order to get the apex, we slide you slide the probe to the side, okay? Slide the probe to the side, follow the heart, follow the heart until you could see this apex of the heart, okay? okay. So, so when you see the apex, okay? So there's a time that you reach the apex. So what you're going to do is you just slightly tilt out, tilt out the probe, okay? And making sure that you are looking onto the right shoulder as well. Then you're going to get a four chamber view. Okay. So this is a four chamber view, this is an apical four chamber view. What we see here is a left atrium, left ventricle, uh, right atrium, right ventricle, right? And then this is the mitral valve, this is a tricuspid valve, okay? One need to note that the tricuspid valve is always much more higher than the mitral valve, right? This is uh, insertion always much more higher. Right? So this is the atrial septum, this is a ventricular septum, okay? Right. So, uh, so this is a normal structure, and also pay attention to the chamber size. Okay, the right and the left chamber are supposed to be nearly equal in terms of size. Okay, and uh, always the atrium is always much more smaller than the ventricle. So that is a principle that we are looking at. So after that, you tilt the probe up slightly. Okay, from that you tilt the probe up slightly. So when you tilt the probe up slightly, you're going to get a five chamber view. So because why does the fifth chamber is fifth chamber is the 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 aortic uh, aorta and the and uh, the aorta view. So you got one, two, three, four, and five. So this is a uh, apical five chamber view. Yeah. So the the importance of this uh, five chamber view we're going to discuss uh, when uh, we're going to measure um, the stroke volume or VTI. Yeah. So then after that, we'll be measuring the inferior vena cava, looking at the inferior vena cava, right? So the trick is always put the probe in the midline, okay? And then slightly tilt to the patient right, yeah? Right? So just move the probe to the midline, midline of the patient, then slightly tilt to the patient to the uh, right side. And then this is an image that you're going to see, right? So because I'm using cardiac probe, so you, you're going to see that later on the image will be the other way around as compared to the usual IVC uh, structure. So, so this, is, uh, this is the pointer here, right? So when you see that this is a whole liver, this is a liver, right? So this is uh, the liver, this is a portal uh, vein, okay? So this is the IVC. Right, so um, as, as the, uh, the IVC sign, sometimes it can reflect what is the central venous pressure. Right. So if you have very high central venous pressure, so the IVC will be very much engorged. So there's a sign that sometimes we use uh, to see whether patient has, is free responsive or not. So if it's a CVP or central venous pressure, pressure is low, you're going to see the IVC is not engorged or collapsible. So I mean, if you flip the image the other way around, so you're going to see that um, the structure of what you saw just now, it looked like a whale, okay? So this is the mouth of the whale, right? So this is the eye of the whale, okay, right? So there's a nose of the whale, okay, right? So uh, because as a principle, as we discussed earlier on, so if you have very high central venous pressure, so the IVC will be very much engorged. So they will be not going to have much variability, right? So that means the IVC will be just dilated. So if you're looking at the pictures, so it's like a, a big well head with the eye, with the nose. Yep, uh, its mouth is open widely and laughing away happily. So this reflects 
uh, usually reflects uh, adequately filled uh, blood circulation. So as compared to a patient with relatively low CBP, right? So with the low CBP, the IVC can have variation in terms of the size. Okay, so when you do do the ultrasound, it seems like uh, this this eye of the whale, nose of the whale, this mouth of the whale, it seems like uh, very thirsty, right? And they want to drink, want to drink. So this is a uh, this is a sign that uh, uh, suggests it also called the thirsty whale. And um, in this particular group, a patient usually, if the patient is hypotensive, uh, there's possibility of free responsiveness. During subsequent uh, module of uh, regarding shock, uh, ultrasound use in shock, so this is one of the quite useful way, right? So at that time, maybe you're going to, you're going to learn how to measure the distensibility and collapsibility by using a M mode across uh, the the IVC, right? But uh, most of the time, the eyeballing can tell you a lot of things. Right. Um, Besides that, sometimes if you're having difficulty in getting a good IVC view from, uh, from the vertical view, sometimes you can do a transverse view. So you just put the, uh, the probe uh, transversely, uh, turn it 90 degrees. So this is a, the, the, the scan that you're going to see. It's the IOTA and the IVC. Also, during the shock uh, module, you're going to see comparing the size of the IVC and also the IOTA in terms of uh, deciding uh, whether the patient is uh, fully responsive or not. So at the same positions, right, with the transverse probe, okay, you look up a little bit, tilt the probe to the side, so you're going to see the subcostal view of the heart. And then this view is quite important uh, for us to detect any pericardial effusion, right? And uh, also it's a good place to see uh, any septal defect, especially the atrial septal defect. Yeah. Very important in this view, um, we, we need to make sure that we catch the liver. So this is the liver, all right? So the liver is the one that sometimes gives us the medium to look into the heart, right? As you see that uh, we are going to subcostal view. So especially this view is sometimes when you see uh, especially when the lung is very hyperinflated, that you cannot even see anything from on the on the chest wall. So a lot of time, this is the view that uh, you can catch and look at the to peep into the heart. But um, very importantly is that uh, we the, the liver is act as a medium for us to look into the heart. So anatomically, so this is the liver, and then this is the atrial septum, ventricular septum, right? Left atrium, left ventricle, right atrium, right ventricle. So this is a mitral valve, this is a tricuspid valve. Okay, so you tilt, if you tilt the probe up slightly, so you're going to see the, the, the left ventricle much more better, right? So same thing, if you tilt further the probe, you're going to get a uh, five-chamber view. It's quite similar like you're doing the apex, right? So you tilt up and then subsequently you're going to see a four chamber and then after that a, a five chamber view. Yeah? So as I say, this is, um, this is a left atrium, left ventricle, right atrium, right ventricle. So this is a aortic, uh, this aorta. So make up a five chamber. So now after, uh, from the bottoms, from, uh, after the subcostal, so you shift the probe up. Uh, at the suprasternal area. I mean, you go up, up on top of the suprasternal notch, okay, and then put the prop uh, pointing toward two o'clock positions, okay, and then look downward into the heart. So this the this this uh, this uh, position that we're going to see the aortic arch. So this is the aortic arch, okay, the branches of the aortic valve, aortic arch, uh, the branches of the uh, aorta, okay, and then the right pulmonary artery is faintly here. So this is an important view sometimes for us to detect uh, any problem with aortic arch like uh, interrupted aortic arch or coartation of aorta. So if you put a probe at this position, you cannot see the arch uh, like this. So sometimes you need to uh, twist the uh, you need to twist the uh, the probe uh, to ninety degree. Uh, sometimes because of the left aortic arch, right, right. So just that was the view uh, in terms of the uh, echo, the different different view. So now we go to the concept of color Doppler, which is very important when you do a echocardiogram or ultrasound of the heart. Okay. Right. 
So uh, it depends on your machine, right? So you see there's a color button uh, in, your, in your machine. So you just press it and then you're going to see the color. So it's very important that uh, we ne need to get a concept right. The concept of how the color detections uh, in, in the echocardiogram. The color itself doesn't mean that uh, it is artery or it is vein. You know, there are two colors usually. They are red color and blue color. Red color doesn't mean that it is a, it is a iota or a oxygenated blood. Blue color doesn't mean that it's deoxygenated blood. They all reflect what is the directions uh, of the flow. Right? So uh, you, you remember this mnemonics, huh? BART, B-A-R-T, blue away, red towards. So when the blood flow towards the probe, okay, so the color that's going to generate by the color Doppler will be red color. If the blood flow flew away from the probe, you're going to have, uh, you're going to show blue color. Okay. So you, when you look at this, uh, this image, okay. So if I put the probe looking downwards, okay, in the carotid area, right. So the carotid artery, this is a carotid artery, this is a jugular vein, okay, internal jugular vein. So the blood flow from a carotid artery towards the probe, so that's why it is red color towards the probe, right? So when, when you detect the vein flow down, this is a vein flow down, it's going to give you a blue color, right? Same positions if I tilt the probe the other way around, okay? If I tilt the probe the other way around, so you're going to see that this is a uh, this is the same thing. This is a carotid artery. Carotid artery. Now the carotid artery flow become blue, because it is flow away, you know, flow away from the probe. That's why it appear blue. Now the vein become red, okay? Because it flow the venous flow from top come down to the probe. So this is a very important concept. Uh, so called the blue away red towards the probe. Uh, the buds are uh, yeah. the so now let's uh, do some uh, color Doppler of the heart. So as you could see that uh, this is a four chamber view, okay? So this is a, a atrium, atrium ventricle, okay? Atrium ventricle, this is a mitral valve. So you could see that the red color, okay? And you, you, you also always remember to, to, look at the, huh, to look at the color panel here, okay? So the color panel here tell you the orientations. Huh? So they mean if the flow towards, towards the probe, it's going to give you red color. Okay? If the flow away, away from the probe, it's going to give you blue color. Right? So you look at it carefully. There's a redness. There's a redness come from the atrium to the ventricle. Right? Atrium to the ventricle. Okay? And this blue jet is actually jet into the iota. All right. So, and, and look at it carefully. There's a small little jet flow here, which is flowing down as well. Okay. So this is a, one of the pulmonary vein. Okay. The jet down into this atrium. So it it, it tell you uh, uh, a lot of things. Huh? Tell you that the flow uh, within the system. So the the important of looking at the flow is that, so if there is an abnormal signal over here, then you know that uh, this particular valve might be defective because uh, especially when you have mitral regurgitation and if you cannot get a, a nice red color flow or blue color flow the red color flow like this or sometimes you have some abnormal jet flow into the into the atrium so it tells you that this mitral valve might be defective okay. so with, with this principle in mind so uh, you can actually put the color all over the place right just to detect any uh, abnormality due to the abnormal flow. So this is another view. So looking at uh, looking at the outflow, this is the left ventricular outflow, and looking at the, at the uh, atrial septum and part of the ventricular septum, and you will see that there's no color in between, which means that there's no flow in between the septum, right? Which means uh, they are intact. There's no ASD. There's no VSD. And look at it here as well. This is a right atrium, my tr uh, tricuspid valve. Okay, the color flow is also one direction, which means the flow is good. If this flow is good, that means the the valve is good, the the septum is good, 
uh, both atrial and uh, ventricular septum. There's no abnormal connection, there's no abnormal flow. So this is another view looking at the uh, outflow. This is a left ventricular outflow. Okay. The, the, as, as we discussed earlier, so this is a very important view. Later on, we're going to learn how to measure a VTI using a five chamber. Five, this is a five chamber view. So we want to see the flow. The flow, everything is blue, which means uh, the flow is good. There's no regurgitation. Yeah? So this is a long axis view, okay? a parasitic long axis. Remember, this is a left ventricle, left atrium. This is an aortic outflow, aorta, uh, right ventricle. So similar thing, the red color towards, blue color up. Huh? Everything is nice um, uh, with a single color difference. There's no turbulence, there's no abnormal flow. It is very important for point of care is pattern recognition. Huh? So as we discussed earlier on, we need to recognize the pattern. With the normal pattern, then only we can know the abnormal. Similarly, when you look at the, uh, the outflow here, everything is blue. So we recognize the pattern, huh? so blue towards there, right? So if there's any abnormal out, uh, out from this normal pattern, then it, is, uh, it, it could clearly show us that this is abnormal. So this is short axis, similarly as we discussed earlier on. Huh? So short axis, iota in the middle, right ventricular outflow, huh? this is a pulmonary valve, okay? So we check, we see the flow across, huh? so this is the main pulmonary artery. Uh, and then you look at the flow, uh, flowing down across, huh? okay? So when you look at it, it seems like I have uh, some abnormal pattern here. But, but uh, this one can be happen because of the slightly high velocity or larger volume, right? So, but uh, when you look at it carefully, it's, the whole thing seems to be very harmony. Right? So when they are quite harmony, right? Uh, so usually uh, are quite normal. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Okay, right. okay. So this is IOTA, so this is uh, the aortic arch view, suprasternal notch aortic view, so similar thing. So you want to look at the, the flow is flowing down, so it's blue color. So if you have any abnormal turbulence here, uh, then you're going to suspect that there's any coartation of IOTA.